Hey, you. Uh, hey. Oh, man. Oh, God, this is so comfy. I'm just gonna lie here and suffocate on my own vomit now. I, uh, I had a thing I wanted to tell you. Uh-huh. This room sure looks different when it's spinning. So, I was browsing through the used book ads in the paper when I... Listen, Eileen, I'm totally excited about books right now, but... Wait, hear me out! So, I noticed this article about a war veteran from Conwell Springs who just died. I remembered that you used to live there and everything, and... Oh, how I wish for joyful, blissful sleep. A and get this! His name was Joseph. Joseph Rain. What did you just say? You knew him, right? I knew it! I knew you'd know him. Yeah, he is... was my grandfather. Hey, wait a minute. I never told you where I grew up. Oh, well, I... Uh, well, I might have sort of looked you up. That is not cool, Eileen. Seriously. I just couldn't help myself. Well, one of these days you're gonna help yourself to a restraining order. I'm just telling you this as a friend. I know. Well, anyway, you should know that the funeral is tomorrow. Okay. Are you gonna go? I don't know. Good night, Eileen. <sighs> Good night, Kathy. Oh, God, make it stop. Looks like Eileen left a note for me here. Hi, Kat. Since it's such a long drive, I set the alarm so you won't miss the funeral. Thank me later. E. I'm so getting a new roommate. Well, I guess I should get going. I'm late enough as it is. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Mildred. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get her for that. I wish I could wrap up that fact and save it for Christmas. Well, here we are. God, I really need a smoke. Does anyone object? Guess not. Dead people rule. A 
family mausoleum. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. We are gathered here today to honor a person of great integrity, a pillar of the community, and a decorated war hero. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart, his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing while our loss is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies so they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Oh, Kathy, you big baby, just talk to her. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Rain? Have we met, Anne? You look strangely familiar. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine who? You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. Look at you, all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now, finally coming home. Let's hope he can, wherever he is. A comforting thought, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Goodness, we have some catching up to do then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. If you wish to find God, the Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Is that so? Here, have a brochure. It's never too late to turn away from the path of sin. And what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path, Father? Wouldn't you say that prejudice is but a small step from the seven big ones? I simply meant that we are all sinful creatures, child. I hope to see you at the church. Don't get your hopes up, buddy. I'll pray for you. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. Grandma, anybody home? I shouldn't overstay my welcome. Oh, hello, dear. I was just wondering what took you so long. Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. Oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. You haven't changed one bit. Always kidding around, just like when you were little. Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. So, 
Now, tell me about your life in the city. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Yeah, I suppose. I must ask, have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. I expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. No matter, that's ancient history. How Sharon then? Mom is... I had her committed to a place where she could get some real help. I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm sorry to hear that. In spite of everything that happened when she took you away. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. I'm just happy that you're here now. Me too. So, what about you? How have you been doing all these years? I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. What accident? Goodness gracious. Of course you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. Don't know what? I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face, like his soul had been ripped from his body. Since that day, he never spoke a word. Forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. It came as a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. Why do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first, I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. Must have had something to do with the war. What did the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's what they call it. I've heard it all by now. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. The third hack tried to sell it off as a severe infection. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. It's one of those state-of-the-art head scans. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Hmm. And this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? Indeed. I refuse to believe it was a coincidence. What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? <sighs> Not much. He said they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but the investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder? Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. You know, I could try to find out more about this. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. Okay, I think I'll head over to the sheriff's station for a little chat then. 
Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Sure, you go ahead. Let me know if I can be of any more help. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. Hi. Hello. Do I have to commit a crime to get your attention? Because I seriously will. Ma'am, I'm really quite busy at the moment. Hey, wait. I know you. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Rain. My reputation precedes me in a kind of but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on. It's me, Lenny. Lenny Marks. I'm drawing a blank. Really? You don't remember us playing when we were little kids? Not really. Sorry, buddy. Darn. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, what can I do for you today? I don't want to show him that. I don't want to show him that. What's your opinion on this church? I think it's a nice enough church. Why? I don't know. The priest seemed odd. Kind of pushy. Yeah, I get your point. But I know the guy. He's harmless. If you say so. I don't want to show him that. I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. Okay, I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. I wanted to ask if you- I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before I- Well, gotta go. See ya.